What's up guys, Coach Shelby here, and I'm here to talk to you about ankle issues and injuries for the basketball player. So you've heard me talk about it before, ankle issues with regards to movement, and if, if you've followed my stuff by now, you know that the ankle joint is very, very functional and a big piece in terms of movement with regards to moving on the court as a basketball player. In particular, what's known as dorsiflexion, or your ability for your toe to kind of come up toward your shin in that tucked position, or your knee to actually go forward in the position. That matters a lot because it does a few things. One is the ability to get the toe tucked up actually puts your body in what is known as the most stable or the, the closed packed position of the ankle. And that closed packed position is, does two things. One is it increases the stability of the joint. Increasing the stability of the ankle joint means you're going to be stronger, more stable when you're on your feet. It means you're gonna reduce the risk of having an injury or an issue, in particular with regards to like sprained ankles and whatnot. Two, the other piece is that, that closed chain or that dorsiflexed position where the toe is tucked up is actually also the strongest position of the ankle in the ankle joint in terms of creating force. So it actually allows you to create the most force because essentially what it does is it loads the back of that lower leg almost like a rubber band. So if you picture yourself having a rubber band from kind of the bottom of the foot wrapped right around up behind the knee, the more you tuck the toe up, the more it stretches that band. Well, the more you stretch that band, especially when the foot's off the ground, the more energy you store. And then once that foot hits the ground, once the ball of the foot hits, that's when you let all that energy back out. It's what I call elasticity. So the, the dorsiflexed or that toe tucked position of the ankle joint is key because it prevents injury and it allows you to move quicker, move faster and be stronger on the court as well. Now, how do you know if you have limited ankle range of motion in the ankle joint, right? That's the next question. So clearly, reduced range of motion in the ankles hurts your ability to squat, it hurts your ability to get low, it affects your power output and your quickness, it also puts you at more risk for injury. So how do we test it? Well, one of the easiest ways you can do it, and is actually shown according to research to be reliable, is by doing what we call a tape measure test. So, so we're going to take that tape and we're going to tape it down to the floor, and we're going to start at the 10 centimeter mark, and that's going to be our initial gauge in terms of determining range of motion. And roughly the conversion for every centimeter you are away from the wall is roughly 3.6 degrees dorsiflexion or range of motion in the ankle joint, at least according to some research. So if I start with my toe at 10 centimeters, that's roughly 36 degrees range of motion at the ankle joint. Research is a little bit all around the place, but it appears in terms of having a normal functioning ankle range of motion, you need at least 20 degrees. And to have a full normal functional squat, realistically you need somewhere in like the mid 30s, plus or minus like three to five degrees, probably above or below. So we shoot for kind of that 10 centimeter mark of baseline in terms of optimal function. That allows you to have enough mobility in the lower leg to be able to squat low without your heels picking up off of the ground. And again, remember all the other pieces that come into play as well. So how do we do this test? Simple. My tape measure's down. I'm going to start my toe at the 10 centimeter mark. My second toe is what I am paying attention to. I'm going to take the middle of my knee and I'm actually simply going to pulse forward and try to tap my knee to the wall without letting my heel lift. You may notice you have differences or asymmetries on the right and left side. That's normal in terms of it being an issue for most people, not normal in terms of we don't want those asymmetries. Those are issues that will, research shows, cause more problems instead of being tight on both sides, tight on one side actually causes more issues than on the other side. So asymmetry is like a really strong right hand, really weak left hand on the basketball court actually are affected here as well. So toes at 10. If I cannot reach the wall here, I'm going to inch myself forward until I can get there. And again, for roughly every centimeter to the wall is roughly 3.6 degrees range of motion. So you can find about how far away you can get, jot it down, multiply it by 3.6. Ideally, I'd like to have you at about the 10 centimeter mark to have good function as an athlete. 
<clears throat> you can keep working yourself away from there one centimeter at a time just to kind of see where your range of motion is at. Now I don't really have issues in my lower body, so I'm gonna be able to get myself back at least to about 14, 15 degrees, right at about 14, uh, 14 centimeters in terms of range of motion. Again, you wanna check right and left side. This is a great test to at least show you where you are. You can test yourself once you start doing mobility drills, soft tissue work, mobility drills, strengthening and stability of the ankle joint to show you if you're actually making progress in terms of the movement. So enjoy that test, make sure you use it. It's a great baseline tool to be able to figure out where you are in terms of ankle range of motion.